Hello and welcome to Real the Real. My name is Nando. And my name is, uh, I don't remember my name. What do you mean you don't remember your name? Uh, who are you? Uh, wh where am I? You're on Real to Real, the reviewing Maze Runner movie. I'm Nando. You don't remember me? I can't remember anything. Wait, I know how to fix this. <laughs> what? Ah! Oh! 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 Wait, I remember. My name's Patrick. We're talking about Maze Runner. Glad you came back. Now, before you lose your memory again, let's watch the trailer. Can you tell me anything about yourself? Who you are, where you came from? Can you tell me your name? I, uh, I can't remember anything. <laughs> Day one, Greeny. Rise and shine. What is this place? Welcome to the Glade. Who put us here? We don't know. What's through there? You guys can't just keep me here. I can't let you leave. Why won't you tell me what's out there? That's the maze. Every morning when those doors open, the runners look for a way out. And no one has ever survived a night in the maze. What happened, Shadow? Well, we call them grievers. We don't belong here. Somebody built the maze. I think it's time we find out what we're really up against. You're not like the others. You're curious. What the hell is that? This is the first real clue you found. Who knows where this might lead us? It's a go. <sighs> Thomas. Everything started changing the moment you showed up. What if we were sent here for a reason? The doors aren't closing. They're here. They're gonna keep coming back until they kill us all. We get out now or we die trying. We're already dead. You sure about this? No. We can't leave. They won't let us. Maze Runner, based off the book by the same name, was directed by Wes Ball and starred Dylan O'Brien as Thomas, Kayla Scaldorado as Teresa, Thomas Brody Stangster as Newell, King Hong Lee as Minho, and Will Potler as Galley. The story starts with a boy named Thomas rising quickly in a rickety elevator called The Box and ending up in an area called The Glade, with big walls on every side. So Thomas didn't remember anything and got scared and confused when he first saw a crowd of teenagers standing right outside who seemed to be expecting him. The fear quickly led to curiosity as he learned that, in the center, that they were in the center of a maze and the group had been there for over three years. Eventually Thomas found out that there were creatures in the maze that would chase after you and kill you if you were in the maze at night. Then, without warning, the box came up less than a week later with the first girl of the group saying, with a note saying, she's the last one ever. Stuff started to get pretty weird after that, so we're going to very quickly summarize the rest of the movie so we don't waste your time morning. They eventually found that the stuff, in, the stuff from the creatures in the maze brings back their memories and realized Thomas and the girl Teresa were partly responsible for them ending up in the Glade. Gally, one of the other boys, started what was basically was a We Hate Thomas Club and tried to banish Thomas and his friends into the maze. After some more clues were found, there was some quick bang bang and some stab stab, and then they escaped the maze just to find themselves in a futuristic office slash lab. A video started playing saying that the scum scorched the earth and there is now a virus that is eating people's brains. These kids are immune and the maze was all a test. Then, after a small fight, the kids leave with the mysterious people setting up for the next movie. Wow, that was a lot. 
Let's take a quick look at the behind the scenes clip and try to navigate this maze of a story. Action. Wes Ball, our director, he's just got this creative mind. If you could sit down in anybody's brain for a day, like it'd either be Prince or him. Action. Go. Cool. One more. You've never seen anyone get more animated or excited or passionate about their job. Like Wes will act out like a like a scenario and he'll be doing all the sound effects like Blast out fast. All that hair explodes up and then it's like coming over here. It's gonna be like shh and the walls are gonna move and it's gonna be like they start knocking over on the walls and they get up on the roof. And you're gonna take that thing, and here it comes, and then you know, and then it hits and lights up. And He's crazy, man. And Wes has a way of of having the most complicated kind of uh, way of working. Like he's a brilliant mind, and then he can also kind of you know like allow you to see it. Like he he has a very easy way of of showing it to you too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're in I am a collaborator, I think, you know, it's like we're in this together. We all share ideas. I mean, I've got my ideas, of course, but I'm open to making this thing the best it can be, and that means outside opinions, you know? I try to keep a pretty open, you know, fun environment for us to kind of just play together. And action! The news was first announced in January of 2011 that a film version of The Maze Runner had been set up at Fox with Catherine Hardwick signed up as a director and Noah Oppenheim hired a screenwriter. As of April 28, 2012, the film had not yet been greenlighted. According to James Dasher, the script for the movie had already been written. And in August 2012, Fox announced that West Ball would direct the Maze Runner film, and as of this year, West Ball is now directing the new live-action Legend of Zelda. And based on how this series did, we're all hopeful for that. A small fun fact, the production team had to hire a snake wrangler to make sure that the set was snake-free, due to being filmed in Louisiana. The fear, of encounter the fear was encountering a cottonmouth, a common and highly venomous snake. It said that West Ball pitched this film like a Lord of the Flies meets Lost because they have no idea where they are. And based on how we see the group react with each other, I can definitely agree on the Lord of the Flies comment. The production team filmed on over 18 acres of land on a local farm that had over 200 acres. And the film was shot in 42 days. West Ball shot a ton of the scenes on the land per day, with uh, some of them or with some days shooting over 60 scenes due to him wanting to make the most of the time that he had. Dylan O'Brien was initially passed over in the audition phase because Ball thought he had MTV hair, whatever that means, and had trouble seeing him as an everyman character of Thomas. Which is funny because when asked about Ball, O'Brien said that he was one of the most laid back people on earth. Now that's all fun. Uh, but let's get into some ads so we can pay our last bill for the season. We really try and keep track of what's going on in the world as far as what are the trends. And so when a student comes here, they're learning the marketing aspects of video production with turnkey. So they learn how to write, storyboard, and capture video, set lights, set audio, and then they learn how to edit everything from start to finish. We believe that we are providing a transformative educational experience. It's hands-on, it's project-based, it's portfolio-based, it's based on real-world industry experiences. They take deep dives on all of these. You know, a lot of the classes are tiered, so you get an entry-level course and then an advanced, and then you know you hit your capstone projects where you're bringing them all together. So it, it's nice the way that they structure it and help you get a deeper understanding of stuff that you may or may not have thought you already had a good handle on. Let me start by saying I've watched this movie three times now and absolutely love the books. I. I have a lot of good and very little bad to say about this movie. I'm going to start with the bad and end on a good note. Firstly, there are some scenes in this movie that were just so dark. My TV couldn't handle it. The screen just looked like black static. That was part my TV and part the movie. I just wish that the scenes were lit up just a little bit more. Next, the story could be very hard to follow. The first time I saw this movie, I had no clue what was going on. I felt lost, confused by the end of the movie. Now, having read the books, I can follow perfectly. If this movie is your first exposure to the series, 
don't be afraid to look things up or ask friends who already know the story. Now for some good. I love dystopian stories. This movie has everything that I love for a good story. The characters all had no idea what was going on, but worked together for some goal that they didn't even know. Not every character survived, and it ended on a cliffhanger, making room for the sequel and eventually the trilogy. On a technical side, the movie was gold. The camera work, acting, music, special effects, all of it was incredible. Um, but what am I going to rate this movie? I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5 reels. My main complaint the whole way through the movie was about my TV, not the movie. But if I didn't already know the story, I might have given it a 3 or 4. Knowing the story and seeing the amazing world get set up was so much fun. So I'm going to give it a 5. What do you think, Nando? Personally, I like the film. I've only seen it twice now that I never got the chance to watch the other films, but from what I've told, they match up in quality. I think the whole concept is one of the most interesting. It's kids locked in a maze with monsters on the other side waiting to tear them apart. And to add on top of that, they're being tested and studied. The way they all try to come together and survive and make roles for each other is super interesting. I think when Westball says that it's a teen movie with teeth, he makes a good point. I wasn't expecting a gore fest or even a soul striking drama, even though it does kind of kind of get gnarly with the whole virus thing going on. I've never read the books myself either, and I'm assuming they do go more in depth with the relationship and tension. I just feel like this movie could use more in that department. But I do think Thomas is a great main character for the story, and I believe the CGI for the monsters isn't half bad either. I can agree with Patrick and say that the movie is super dark outside the maze scenes, but that's my only critique. I'm giving The Maze Runner a 4 out of 5 reels. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Make sure to follow us on YouTube and Facebook to catch up on our next shows. We want to say, on behalf of the Real to Real team, we appreciate you coming back every week and hanging out with us. We hope you have an amazing year, and we'll catch you on the next season of Real to Real. Real.